So what is up guys? So our deck profiles are coming to a close after Platina and after Mega Colony. Set 9 will be coming soon after those. So we're going to go over Set 9 for you. We're going to get you prepped. We're going to get you on your craft grind here. We want to know what you're going to want to get. And you got to go for the good stuff. So we're going to start off this video with the new gold stuff. And this is when we're introduced to Liberators. Yeah! So let's see. So let's explain to you Break Ride real quick. So Break Riding in Vanguard, if you're new to it. Break Riding is when you have one of these units said when rode upon. This is a Break Ride unit. So when you ride another G3 on top of it, they get special effects, added bonuses, and all that for a turn. So it's like big end game final plays for a lot of Vanguard back in the day too. So we're going to be starting off with Solitary Liberator, Gancelot. When rode upon until the end of the turn, your Vanguard gets plus 10,000 power. And three of your rear guards get plus 5,000 in addition. If your Vanguard is a Liberator, add a Blaster Blade Liberator from your deck to your hand. And if your deck has no Liberators, add one from the drop zone. So you're guaranteed to add one G2 to your hand. That's as much as this Break Ride is giving you besides power columns. And that's pretty much it. So at this point reading this, I guess I would assume a stand deck since the columns are high already. But we'll see. Liberator of the Round Table, Alfred. Alfred gets upgraded. He's a limit break 4. When this unit attack gets 2,000 power for each Liberator, so max is 10,000. Uh, he does have a Counter Blast effect, though, that isn't a limit break 4, and it can be used as Vanguard or Rear Guard. You Counter Blast 2, look at the top 4 cards of your deck, and call a Liberator. Okay. I still had to pay CB2 for that. But at least it's a free call, so if you were lacking a G2 intercept, at least Alfred can go look for at least a booster or an intercept. Something that you're lacking. So he doesn't even have to be end game plays. He does kind of help you even as a rear guard. So that's pretty nice of him. Blaster Blade Liberator. When placed, if your Vanguard is a Liberator. Keep in mind this set is legit name based. You're going to have to get used to the Liberator and Eradicator because the names actually do matter for certain cards. So Blaster Blade Liberator is, you Counter Blast 2, Retire anything. Okay, so it's just Blaster Blade, just what he should have had. Okay. So we have another Break Ride unit. His name is Steel Spiel Liberator Bilio Beris. Uh, limit Break 4. When you ride on top of him, you CB1. Your Vanguard gets plus 10,000 power, and you call the top two cards of your deck. So pretty much like, it's almost like Vortimer in Duke, but now it's a Break Ride unit. And I like that because that means you can play some Spirits. So again, you can get some Sacking in if you need it. A Spirit can do it. So it doesn't. it's not really... The call effect isn't limit, limited, <laughs> limited to the Liberators. So you can call out the top two cards, and wherever they are, they get placed. So that's a nice break ride. That's definitely going to be used, period, I think, in my opinion. Gancelot may give you 5,000 power, but sometimes power creeping doesn't really matter. The call two is possibly going to be better for you just to make big plays. My two cents on that. Main Rain Liberator Bruno. When your other rear guard is placed from the top of your deck, so when you call a unit, if it's a Liberator, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, so it's a 10k booster. whoop dee doo Alright, here's one of our forerunners that we are getting in the new set. At the end of the battle, that this unit boosted a unit with LB4, put it into your soul, draw a card. So technically you get one extra draw with this, if you use it, but I highly doubt you will be. Uh, another common Dignified Gold Dragon, when this unit attacks a Vanguard, it gets 5,000 power, but that's an LB4. If it's a Rear Guard, it gets that 2,000 effect, like all those other units that are rares. Oh, this is like one of my favorite units. Oh, I can't wait to read this. When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, if your Vanguard is a Liberator, Counter Blast 1 to call the top card of your deck. Uh, I could do this with Vivian, so I don't know why my Vanguard has to be named a Liberator where Vivian can do it by no no name whatsoever but liberator again is a key factor to make these effects work so i don't understand i think this says mostly for people that are about to get into vanguard zero and they wanted to play gold paladins i guess the most cards you would get is liberator since the sets stopped being mixed but i don't think ezel decks are ever going to change because they're too free on call power let's continue flower gardener put this unit into your soul draw a card and discard a card from your hand this is another forerunner so it's like a little filter draw a card discard a card Okay. Awakening Liberator Freed. When placed as a Vanguard, Counter Blast 1, call two cards from the top of your deck. Are you serious? Why is this why is this rare card better than everything I just read so far? What? I'm sorry. What? What is this? 
So this plus belly bus is calling four units for free, practically. Counterblast two, and you're calling four units by then. Okay. Okay, Game Studios. I see you. Liberator Silence Galatine, 10k. Obviously nice. But uh, Overcast Liberator Gerant, when your other rear guard is placed from your deck, if your Vanguard is a Liberator, this unit gets plus 3,000 power. What's with these call effects? They're not going to be as consistent. I mean, this is like a one-turn effect, I get that, but it really doesn't matter because power creeping doesn't matter unless you, if your opponent has intercepts, power creeping means crap right now. It is It is what it is. It's like that. That's why... I, I don't know, man. I really feel like Liberator is going to have to be like a stand deck somehow. I don't know. I just I just really feel like that because Gansalot Liberator sets it up as a stand. I can see it. Alright, another G1. When this unit boosts a unit with LB4, it gets 3,000 power, so it's a 9k booster for your Vanguard. Fast Chase Liberator Josephs. Josephus. I think. <laughs> when placed from your deck, your Vanguard is a Liberator, Soul Blast 1 to draw a card. So it's legit the Loppier Bunny in gold. That's a 6k with the Ezel effect, but this one needs a specific unit named Liberator to do the effect. Good thing most of this deck will be Liberator, so it will work, and it's a 7k booster. So a positive, since we're calling so much. I mean, you call this with Alfred, and then you draw a card. It's, it's plain and simple. I guess that's the way to get PGs. Maybe I should think positive for Liberators. I don't know. Maybe there's some use. Who knows? Future Liberator Lou. When this unit boosts a Vanguard, if you have four more li Liberator Rear Guards, it gets plus 4,000 power. So a 10k booster. If it's all Liberators. When this unit boosts Liberator the Round Table, Alfred. Alfred gets his horse. Soul Blast 1. Get plus 5 power. So it's an 11k booster. Well... Yeah, it's an 11k booster. Oh, so it's 2200. Yeah, okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Halo Liberator, Mark. When the Vanguard is hit, if you lose, if you knock guard, perfect guard is activated. So these are the new Sentinels we are getting in set 9. These are the Sentinels that are going to help you break ride. So if you're at 3 damage, your opponent gets a 2 crit, congratulations, you're at 5th damage, which means it's time to break ride slash limit break. That's the beauty of that. That's the beauty of these new PGs. You get pushed to five and you're able to use it. Thank God. We needed some PGs like that because this is the only way to make sure our options are open. I think I saved a lot of my Sentinel medals. <laughs> Little Liberator, Marin. Aw, Marin. During your turn, if your Vanguard's a Liberator, 3,000 power. So it's one of those units when you put it in the front, it's 3,000. It's like 10k. When this unit attacks, Counter Blast 1. 3,000 power, it's one of those units. Mongol, when your grade 3 Vanguard is placed, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. Okay, whatever that is, that's why it's a common. <laughs> Liberator of Royalty Fallon, during your turn, if your Vanguard is a Liberator, becomes a 12k beat stick. Okay, cool. Aw, uh, cute puppy. Kitty? Nah, that's a pup. Pomerugo Liberator, you kind of blast one, just gets 1,000 power, normal common. Shine Spear Liberator Rynet. Uh, when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, Counterblast 1, look at the top 5 cards of your deck, add a grade through a grader to your hand. So this is supposed to be... This card is used to go fetch your Break Ride if you don't have it in your hand, so you can ride the Break Ride first, and then you ride your G3 next, and then you're set. That's why they made that card. Don't know why, don't know how. It's really weird. Boulder Smashing Knights, Segwide, Sega Rides. When this unit attacks, you Counterblast 1, it goes up to 12k. So it's a great two that can go 12k, which is good. Maybe early game plays, and then you heal. So on and so forth. Wingall Liberator, another G0. Forerunner. When the attack by a Liberator, this unit boost hits a Vanguard. Put this into your soul, and you go you go grab Blaster Blade Liberator. I want you guys to know Blaster Blade Liberator is going to be a rank award, so if you don't pull enough of them, don't worry. Rank awards got your back on that. Just pull what you can. I say maybe get... I honestly can say don't probably don't get anything because most of these cards are oh, like none of these cards really stack up to the actual old gold set support, where the old gold set has Ezel and Ezel has more combos than what Liberators is bringing besides power creeping. But that's about it. I don't really see much with uh, this. Maybe you can mix Liberators with the uh, mix the Break Rides with Ezel. And that's about it. That's about it I can tell you with this because obviously the triple rares in this are. Pretty like self exclamatory and they're pretty like basic uh, common uses. Retiring, calling the top card if it's a liber if your liberator vanguard. Vivian does that. If you have Vivian, you're good. Like I said, I think they just made liberators for people that are about to start zero 
and they're in set 9 and they missed everything. That's just my two cents. Zoigo Liberator. During your turn, you have four more rear guards. This unit gets plus 3,000 power. Nice 11k. We are now done talking about golds. Hallelujah. Um, final opinion. Yeah, it's, they look like... I don't even think they would be draw turbo liberate. If we were going to play Liberators, I don't feel like it would be too much draw turbo. I would really feel like it stands since we are doing power creep plays. So yeah, I'd probably go with a possible stand with a couple draws. So the deck maintain, maintains consistency and we're drawing our cards. That's my two cents. Now let's get started on the next big thing coming to zero, which is Eradicators, baby. Yeah, but this name's not an Eradicator. When this unit boosts a unit with LB4, it gets 3,000 power. So again, one of those 9Ks, that boosts a Vanguard. Card you're going to want to want. Eradicator Saucer, Cannon Wyvern. When plays, Counterblast 2, retire one of your opponent's rear guards. So Eradicators are like the snipers, but you actually do the CB2. There's Death Sight the same, but Death Sight doesn't have Eradicator in its name. So you're going to want four of these. They made you go get another four. Sad face, I know. Because, like I said, names are going to mean something with these new clans now. You have to have the name. Eradicators and Liberators, they need their name cards, so they work. Just ridiculous. Ceremonial Bonfire Eradicator Caster. When placed, if your opponent has two or less rear guards, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw a card. So, a tiny little filter if you drew crappy. I guess you want to look for Descendant, which we'll go over soon. Martial Arts General Damn! I'm going to call him Martial Arts Damn! At the end of the starting phase, Soul Charge 1. So this is a Mega Blast unit. Uh, and what it does is, you Soul Blast 6, Counter Blast 4, to retire one of your opponent's rear guards for each of your rear guards. So I guess you match them and then you kill everything, or you just kill the front row. All you need is like 2 if you have to retire something. So not too bad, but it's not like the best. <laughs> Eradicator Demolition Dragon during your turn. If your Vanguard's an Eradicator, this unit gets plus 3,000, so it becomes a 10k if Eradicator name is the Vanguard, pretty much. Discharge Dragon is a Limit Break 4, and it gains 5,000 power when it attacks Vanguard. If it's a Rear Guard, it gets the plus 2,000 effect like the other units. Big Daddy unit right here. You're gonna want this. It is a beauty. Eradicator Dragonic Descendant. This effect only activates once, though. When this unit attacks, it gets the following ability. Until the end of the battle, end of that battle, if this attack did not hit during that battle, counterblast one, discard two eradicator cards from your hand, mind you, from your hand, stand it, draw two cards, and get plus one critical to, until the end of the turn. A couple of things you can do with Descendant, actually. Descendant's an amazing card, by the way. You go critical if you don't hit. You legit do all these other effects. It's really good. Uh, he just goes critical though, but to a way to work this effect around, which I noticed, uh, you can legit attack the Vanguard with a different unit. They go up to 1600. You attack with Descendant. You don't hit, technically. Then you discard two cards. He gets reset. Now he's hitting for two, so he becomes a critical unit after just attacking base first, and then you're going to boost. But that's what I'm saying, like, if you have, like, the critical triggers, you make it faster, and then it becomes a three crit unit. So this becomes, like, Duke, the Spectral Duke Dragon, just way better, like, support for it. And you get away with a lot more, especially when you discard two cards, you draw two cards. So pitching two G3s that you don't freaking need just to get two cards that you will possibly need? Yes, please. That is the beauty of Eradicator Dragon Descendant. I, th I like that a lot. And it's an LB4. It's beautiful. Definitely crits and draws with that possibly too, since the attack can't hit. And if you're at fourth damage, you hit a crit. Oh, didn't hit. Restand. Hit another PG. Good. Final turn. GG's on the next turn since I have my PGs. Boom. It's beautiful. All right, we got our. Uh, we have our break ride unit right here. This is a double rare break ride for eradicators. Uh, when a unit rides upon it, it gets 10,000 power. Plus, when your opponent front row rear guard is retired by your effect, you retire the back row as well. There's a lot of combo potential with this, but obviously this is like a budget version of what you really want to go after. It's a nice card. I mean, those retire effects uh, work in your favor. You retire two units instead of one for a CB2, so that's nice. So you're really cleaning up your opponent's field, and you can do a lot. Lightning Fist Eradicator Dewey. When this unit boosts, Eradicator Gauntlet Buster Dragon. Soul Blast 1, and then you give it 11k boost. It's really nice. So here's a big, 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 big unit you're going to want. It is so freaking stupid. No, it actually is. 
When your opponent rear guard is retired by your effect, this unit gets critical. This is a continuous effect, so the more you retire, the more crits you get. He actually has an effect of killing back row only, but if you use even the double rare effect, in a way, if you use the double rare effect, because I think the double rare said anything, it just says when a front row... So legit, if you retired with a great that grade 2 sa saucer we saw, and you kill two, though, that's already plus three critical. You counterblast two, and you already went three critical just from that one counterblast alone. So there is a lot that goes with that, which is great. Three crits, two crits. This dude can legit go two crit every CB2, pretty much. It's really good. Gauntlet is definitely good. Eradicator Wyvern Guard Gold. This is one of those new PGs when this only activates when you are gonna die. Not you're at three, you take two crits, the two crits will go through this time. So this PG is going to still be in your hand by the time the game's almost over, which is nice because that helps with your break riding. That's what you want. I love it. Double Gun Eradicator Hakusho. When your opponent rear guard is retired by your card effect, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, so it becomes a 12k when you retire. Okay. Next, Sword Dance Eradicator Hisan. When this unit boosts that Descendant Dragon, it becomes an 11k booster. So hit high numbers, pretty much. Lightning Blade Eradicator Jeem, during your turn, if your opponent has two or less rear guards, this unit gets plus three thousand power. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how consistent it is to keep your opponent at two or less, but yeah, sure, why not? Ambush Dragon Eradicator Lynch you, legit, beautiful, be 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 beautiful, great forerunner by the way. When the attack by an Eradicator, this unit boost hits a Vanguard. You CB one, put this unit into your soul, retire one of your opponent's rear guards. And that's that. That's pretty strong. You can say this for Dauntless, actually, for a big final play. Big crit play. See, that's only a CB1. You already got that one crit you need to push your opponent. Which is good. It's nice to have that type of forerunner. Kill anything. Not just a G1. You kill everything. You can even kill early forerunners. So it's legit Plasma Zashin. Or you can save it for stronger plays. Who knows? The sky's the limit with that. Demonic Dragon Age. <laughs> Dragon Age. Dragon Mage. Majila, when placed, one of your other units gets plus 2,000 power, so it's one of those AK units. Iron Fan Eradicator, Nitiri, when this unit attack hits, you kind of blast two to draw a card. This card is definitely situational, I guess, when building, but not a lot of people will use it because we already have Descendant trying to legit get crits off to just game your opponent for free. That's nice. Homing Eradicator, Rokushin. Rokushin, when your opponent's rear guard is retired by your card effect, this unit goes up to 13k. So I guess they want you to try to build a stand deck with this card, but I don't see that happening. But they want you also to retire a unit so it becomes a 13k beat stick. So okay, sure. Steel Blood Eradicator Shuki, when your punch rear guard is retired by your card effect, this unit gets plus 3,000 power. Sure. Eradicator Spark Rain Dragon, during your turn, if your vanguard is an Eradicator, this unit gets plus 3,000 power, just in your average 12k base unit. Eradicator Thunderboom Dragon, just a basic 10k vanilla. <sighs> I don't even know if I can really stress this enough, but you kind of do need four of these just to make it consistent. Three is fine. Uh, but yeah, when you ride on top of Vowing Sword Dragon, your Vanguard gets 10,000 power, and you retire one of your opponent's front row rear guards. So legit, this is just dungaree as a break ride. Hate to say it, it is, but it's for break ride purposes, for those big final attacks to do it get things done that free retire will push you this is great with freaking gauntlet buster this is great with descendant too as long as you're freeing up the field to the point descendant legit swings for game and you get those extra attacks in that's game over fifth damage you're dead that's like that's legit four attacks right there you would need four pgs to make it to live actually because of eradicator bound sword retiring an intercept and you have another intercept killer you it's game i'm sorry eradicator bound sword is too good it opens up too many options Barrage Eradicator Zeon, when this attack, when this unit attacks, it's one of those 3,000 boosters like all the other Vanguard units. Very interesting um, G2 for Eradicator, since it's only exclusive to Eradicator armies. Sorry, that's the whole point about the Eradicator name. <laughs> when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, if your Vanguard's an Eradicator, you Soul Charge 1, but you also Counter Charge, so you're healing out of those Retiree effects, which is good. It's really good. That helps you, like... It helps you a lot. <laughs> CB2 is a lot, and you are definitely be running four of these, so make sure you have all four, for sure. That concludes with Narukami's new cards coming out, the Eradicators. 
You want to get those effects out of the match you can, especially the retires. They are going to be a strong deck because they are retires in zeros format when there's barely any intercepts. You're legit swinging like a god. Period. That's why Eradicators are good. Bounding Sword pushes you to new limits. And Descendant legit getting a crit is just overkill to me. That just says, ha, GG's. You're dying. There's no living. Especially if you're at fourth damage and I'm running a crit build. Yeah, GG's. Take that three. <laughs> Anyways, back to this. So we have a new clan. We have to really discuss this new clan for you newcomers that are getting into zero. Genesis. Genesis is a soul charging deck. They get their effects in the soul. When they get soul blasted out of the soul, their effects go off. Sorry, I'm like talking a lot and I got all this all this stuff coming. <laughs> but the point of Genesis in part one is to just soul charge to get some of your god effects with Izanami and some of the other cards which we'll be showing you. And also, I'll tell you in set 11, which we are going to go over for Japan side of things, what how Genesis got like 10 times better. But we're going to go over set one first so you guys are prepared for it. This is like a new clan, so let's get you started. Broom Witch Callaway. When this unit attack hits, counterblast 2, draw a card. No, don't use that. Number one thing about this deck, number one thing about Genesis, you are possibly not going to run draw triggers. Maybe like one to two, but definitely no draw triggers the way this deck runs. You'll see why. So this is one of the souls I'm talking about. You have to pull four of this or craft four of this. You have to have four of this, period. This is a staple, because once it gets soul blasted, you counter blast one, you call it, and it becomes a 12k beat stick. So during your turn, when this card is put into your drop zone, counter blast one, call it, gets plus 3,000 power. Which of the cats? Soul charge one. Exists an angel. When the attack this unit boots hits a vanguard, soul charge one. Like I said, this deck is full soul charge, and you are going to legit have to kill your opponent really quick. Why I recommend crits, because you got to go fast, because you can deck out the second you blink so let's go over the forerunner here this is a ride chain this is aiming for the stars artemis artemis is on the ride chain of genesis when this game started so when wrote upon by the grade one look at the seven grab a grade two grab a grade three yada yada if nothing else you call it their grade ones right here when wrote up this one's actually a very important effect for you when this card is wrote upon by other grade two you go look for the grade two so it's like coral but this card's effect is like 10 times better <laughs> This card's like almost like 10 times better with the Coral effect because you actually do need the G2 more than you need the G2 Coral. But yeah, this is definitely good because this lets you ride the Grey 2. And the Grey 2, right here as you see, this says you Soul Charge about, like, you can Soul Charge about four cards. And we need a lot of Soul Charging for a lot of these effects because Genesis used a lot of Soul Blast, heavy Soul Blasting. That's why they made selective Soul Blasting cards when this set dropped. It's for Genesis, that's why. So when this unit attack hits a Vanguard, you Soul Charge 2. If you have the G1, Soul Charge 2. So you Soul Charge 4 for free. This is its final form, Battle DT Knight Artemis. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you Soul Blast 3. Draw 2, put a card from your hand into your soul. So you're keeping your soul heavy. Keep in mind, that's the whole point. You're supposed to keep the soul heavy. This is how you put your Chrome in, you Soul Blast it, you get another G2, and actually you possibly will be getting an extra attack as well since you put Chrome in there and you're Soul Blasting, or you Soul Blasted it anyways, there is going to be a lot of combo tech when it comes to Genesis. You have to play it right for sure. You have to know what to put in your soul and what you can get. This card also has a Persona Blast. Artemis' Persona Blast is you discard another version of her, look at the five cards on top of your deck, choose a card, add it to your hand. It's like an ad between the top five cards. It's not the goddess of the sun effect, but it's something. It's a Persona Blast. Oh, excuse me. A lot to go over. Hazard Bob is just a self-damager for Genesis. Genesis starts out with some self-damagers. So we have a break ride unit for Genesis. We get Himiko first. When rode upon until the end of the turn, your Vanguard gets plus 10,000 power, two of your rear guards get plus 5,000 power, and your Vanguard gets the following ability. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, Soul Blast 3 to draw two cards, and then you put a card into your soul. So it's just what Battle TT got, you know? That's the whole point. And you know what's so funny? You're gonna laugh at this. Actually, it's kind of interesting. Because believe it or not, this unit doesn't have to be a complete superior chain. You, you can be on two. You can ride Himiko before you go into this. That will start your combos. 
the best thing about Artemis is there's no, nothing happens when you ride on top of this. That's the problem. Nothing will happen. So this is why you ride Himiko four big plays with this, where you'll be soul blasting pretty much six cards max to draw two cards, two go back into the soul. You're legit getting your Chrome Jailer chick, I call them just Chromiella or whatever, her the 9k to come back out and fight. So you're legit setting up this giant play and you drew these cards and you're set. You, like I said, you gotta game them. That's the point of critting. We're knocking out those PGs so our 12k units that come out are ready to fight. And this happens before your trigger step, believe it or not. So that's good too. Whew. A lot. Iwanagahime, you're gonna want four. Period. This ain't a rank award. You want four of this. This effect makes Genesis what you need to finish your opponent so you don't deck out. The point of this card is you soul blast six. The whole front row's retired. They have no intercepts. Go for game. You have no choice. Iwaganamihime, Inuguahime is needed for you to win. Period. It clears the intercepts. After you're done with Battle TDT Artemis, go this and the game. GG's. Clean up intercepts, there is no blocks. If they have three BGs, that's on you. But that's like most of these scenarios now when it comes to a break ride, final turn. Definitely, you're going to want that. Trigger layout, like I said, is going to be crits. At least maybe seven crits, two draws. But I don't think we're going to need draws if we pull off the ultimate combos with Himiko and everything. And everything's getting soul charged perfectly. When we soul blast, the draws already happened. They're in my soul already. And Chrome is going off and off and off. Battle Maiden, Izahime. Izahime. 10k vanilla. Gods of the Self Sacrifice Kushinada. It's one of those units. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to Ali about this one. I don't know if this is actually their first Sentinel where it works normal when you're at three, you take a crit, it doesn't activate. Or this is they actually got this Sentinel as you, you get pushed to fifth damage and then this will activate when you're about to die. I think he'll help me clarify, but that's their PG. When this unit attacks, it gets plus two thousand power until the end of the battle. Okay. Mythgard La Superba. Which of the frogs, Melissa? You're going to need this too. This is how you get boosters. This is free boosters. If you soul charge this, guess what? You have your boosters. During your turn, when this unit is put into your drop zone, counter blast one, call, and plus 2,000 pounds. So it becomes a 10k beat stick when you summon it. So legit, her and Chromie Yela, whatever her name is, pretty much those columns are set at 2,200. You're going to win, period. You're going to be able to swing. You don't need a trigger. That's the point of Genesis. There is no trigger check. You have these soul units. You're set. Period. It's over. You won. That's over the Vanguard twice. The trigger just adds extra. <laughs> so four of that. Battle Maiden and Miki Hikari. Oh my god. I got to go to Jap... I got to like, take a, like, a Japanese class or something. Battle Maiden and Miha Hikari Hime. Just an AK booster. <laughs> Battle Maiden Mizuha. Not bad for a budget Genesis deck if you only pulled this. Pretty much her effect is you limit break four. It's limit break four. You soul blast three and she goes critical. That's nice. It's a crit unit. That's very good in Vanguard Zero because we need to knock out PGs. And it's only a soul blast at three. So if you set up like nine soul blasts, 12 soul blasts, at least you're guaranteeing yourself the crit. And since you're running a certain type of crit build, you could do a lot with that. Which of the Owls? Paprika, during your turn, if your unit is LB4, becomes an 11k. Pineapple Law is just another self-damager. Which of the Wolves is one of those units where it's the Vanguard, 5,000, if it's a rear guard, 2,000, so they just, they're trying to introduce like a new method. Battle Maiden Sohohime! When this unit attack hits a Vanguard, Counter Blast 1, Soul Charge 3. So they got an Emblem Master as well. That's why it's situational. If you charge that grade 1, that grade 2, you now have a power column of 1,200 for an extra attack. If you have your soul blasting mu <laughs> your soul blasting units prepped. Period. It's one giant big final attack. It is beautiful. Scheduler Angel, when this unit boosts, it gets 3,000 power, so it's one of those 10Ks that get boosted. Snipe Snake is for uh, 9K boosters for your Vanguard. Spectral Sheep is your Forerunner. Put this into your soul, draw a card, and then discard a card, so it's one of those. But uh, Battle Maiden, Tamahor Hime, when this attacks, this unit boost hits a Vanguard, you count less two, Soul Charge 3. So it's way to... The Soul Charge 3 is legit for Battle Maiden, Hisa, Hisamine, or Himanu, or whatever the H is. <laughs> so you use this a little bit too to kind of get the crit anyway, so there is a, I guess, a certain Battle Maiden build you could make as a budget. 
But the Deity one so far to me looks like the strong suit for the Souls. And your Jailer, Chromielas, and all that good stuff for Genesis. Definitely Genesis is going to look strong a little bit when it starts. It won't look as busted yet, but when we get to set 11, we'll discuss how they got busted. But right now, they're basic right now. This is just normal for them. And you'll get used to it with the Soul Charging. And thanks to Selective Soul, Char soul Blasting, you'll be able to pull off your combos fast. Battle Maiden Tatsu Tahime, when the unit boost hits a Vanguard. Kind of last two Soul Charge 3. So there's, a, there's another one that does it, but I don't think anyone does the Battle Maiden like scenario. <laughs> so Genesis wise, yes, that deck is definitely not draw turbo heavy. Do not draw turbo. If you draw turbo, the deck falls apart. Everything has to go to soul. You can't have too many cards in your hand. You gotta have them in the soul. The cards in your hand should only be the grade three break rides and all that good stuff. You can have a couple G2s for defense, but that's about it. Make sure the soul units that have to get activated are in the soul. Period. That's what it has to be. That's why you don't want too many draws or you're going to screw yourself. All right. Final clan. Oh, I'm running, I'm running out of, like, talking juice. Armor heavy. So we're on Nova Grapplers, and with the introduction of Nova Grapplers, we get Mr. Epic Bussa. But we'll get to him soon. So Arm Heavy Gunner is a unit where it gains 5,000 power when it attacks the Vanguard. When he is the Vanguard. And then... When he's a rear guard, he gets the 2,000 effect. Oh, okay. Bloody Rain, during your next turn, you have a unit with LB4. This unit gets plus 3,000 power. All right. Beast DT, damned Leo. He's a 10K, but if he restands, he's just 10K. So he's not, like, too important. We have Ankla that restands to 13K, so it's a better unit. The 10K is probably just there to kind of fight the 10K intercepts, but keep in mind, most of the intercepts... Of these new decks are legit limited to 9Ks, pretty much. No one's playing too many 10Ks these days. So again, you'll be able to pull off your restand with Anklet in most units already. Energy Charger, eh, situational. Nice Soul Blast draw card. So it's one of those cut glass sword situations. So it's not too bad. I mean, you could possibly run like one. It's like a bird and all that. One free draw never kills you. <laughs> one free draw is not going to kill you because you actually, I think you actually have to run one of those for your Ethic Buster. No, I don't know. We'll see. And here he is, Beast Deity, Ethic Buster, who becomes a freaking rank award when set 11 drops. So don't worry if you don't pull them all now, or you're not wanting to finish this deck as quick. Just wait to set 11, he's a rank award. You'll be fine. All right? Okay, Ethic Buster. When rode upon, your Vanguard gets 10k. And when the unit attacks, stay on all your front row rear guards. This is good for your anklets. If you have like a column of anklets, that your anklets keep attacking until they get really strong, really strong, and then boom, got them how i see it uh block cougar will be at 10 block cougar in general will be at 20k but he will have a booster in back to always keep swinging and restanding your units so that's like three damage all right they restand they're powered up Thir fourth damage okay they restand they power up you're on the fifth damage you didn't waste your boosters you're ready to fight back and get the game in yeah you want to make sure you micromanage your block cougar for that because block cougar busters is where it's at right now so get your block cougars ready because that's when Ethic starts going ham. Beast Deity, Hatred Chaos. He becomes a 12k if there's a Beast Deity Vanguard. So this is only good for possibly Illuminal Dragon plays. Um, but once we ride Block Cougar, it just becomes 9k. So we don't set up the Block Cougar play with this unit. We set the Block Cougar play to our Anklets and our Yamamoto Drakes. Especially the Yamamoto Drakes. Beast Deity, Hilarity Destroyer. When you attack hits or attack this unit boost hits, if your Vanguard is a Beast Deity, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, a draw a card. Yee. Draw a card. Uh, I'm going to say something after that, after we're done with the discussion on ethics. At the end of the battle, this unit boosts, you put this in your soul. You draw a card since it boosted an LB4. When this unit boosts LB4, it gets plus 3,000 power until the end of battle. Okay. Beast Deity, Riot Horn. When a Beast Deity in the same color has this unit stands. Stand this unit. So again, it's like Prey Soldier just restands if it's a Beast Deity, so on so and so forth. I mean, that's why we have <laughs> Death Army Guy and Prey Elemental Soldier. And we get the new Beast Deity Sentinel that says if we get pushed, we're going to get pushed to five, and it won't activate until this, if, it was, if it was six, it would activate. If it's five, it won't activate, and you'll be able to save yourself from death, and you'll be able to break ride. 
All right, I believe that is definitely it. We have went over all of set nine. And my final theory with Ethic Buster, honestly, like, I would say if you're healing, maybe, too. Like, if you healed and you break ride and you kept break riding or the final damage is there. Block Cougar is there just to make the three attack work. And I understand that because Block Cougar is there because it's fourth damage. You attack with Block Cougar, you re-stand everyone. That, there's your three attacks on the Vanguard, period. That's game. But, um, yeah, I can see that. So, pretty much when riding Block Cougar, it's Block Cougar has to at least have... If you ride Block Cougar, your opponent's at four, and then you're good to go. Then it's three attacks on Vanguard. If you don't win, you don't win. You, you can't control that. That's the problem. <sighs> and that's how I see Ethic Buster. Definitely still remains draw turbo because a Block Cougar needs the cards, and you got to maintain a PG at least, so on and so forth. But that will conclude today's session, guys, on Set 9. As you can see, Battle Maidens Genesis is a very interesting clan, very soul chargey. Reminds me of my friend Ali with his Ragey. Uh, the only difference is between soul charging with this clan and Darker Regulars. Darker Regulars have chariots. They can recharge their decks. That's why they can run Draw Turbo. These guys can't. You have to win fast. Because you soul charged like a mofo and you needed a lot to do effects with. With your soul blasting power. Just going to let you know that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, B Battle of Deity of the Night Artemis is definitely going to be a nice deck, too, that helps you push with other units. You definitely, I think, Battle TD might be the strong version of, um... It might be, like, the first of the strong versions between the Battle Maiden build, but yeah, definitely, pff, definitely will be. Like I said, get all your ki Kimio Miles, Camo Miles, just get your Ravens. <laughs> just get your Ravens. You get those guys for sure. Um, Eradicators, yeah, make sure you get at least three to four of, so you, at least you can have some consistency. Uh, yeah, definitely you might be running Stormbreaker Dragon to G3 Search, so keep that in mind as well. But Stormbreaker will probably be like an um, outside source. B Buster Dragon, obviously, get definitely get those. That's your heavy crit unit right there. Eradicator, Dragonic Descent is just the big brain smart boy plays. Uh, uh, maybe to me he is. Very good with the restance, like Jailer, but stronger. Uh, not Jailer, uh, Duke. Special Duke, you know. <sighs> and there's our Super Can. So, like I said, I mean, when it comes to Liberators, I mean, it's just Liberators is meant for. Liberators is legit, legit meant for people that are about to start zero. Because Liberators, as they are, effect wise, aren't as good compared to Ezel. Yes, they have a lot of call power, but still, they still lack, like, a lot of combo potential. They don't really have anything special, no retirees. That's why I definitely recommend the spirits. At least if you call your spirits, at least you have a retire. You don't have to worry about Blaster Blade Liberator, period. And like I said, stand, stand triggers are probably going to be the go-to for this clan. Since I guess since you are calling and they do go power creep, they do power creep a lot. So you might have to do that as well. Yeah, because Gansight gives everyone like 5,000. So pretty much he does like Soul Saver Dragon. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Alright guys, that concludes our set nine discussion. That was a lot to talk about. It was a lot of cards. So hopefully this provided you some insight. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you feel like it. Join my Discord. We, we talk a lot. We're like cool people there. So y'all be good. You all stay safe and I'll see you for a set nine unboxing. But first, let's get through our Mega Colony and Platinum Ezels deck profile. Peace out. Love y'all. <laughs>